Since the outbreak of the deadly disease COVID-19 in Nigeria, it has really been a tough tax for organizations providing humanitarian services in the Northeast to discharge their duties. David Hapa, manager of humanitarian and restillant action aid, in a phone conversation, she has his experience with PLOS TV Africa. Where Nigeria is currently faced with a lot of humanitarian emergencies. In the Northeast, um, we have the situation of uh, Boko Haram insurgents, um, an over 11 year conflict that has given rise to a lot of um, humanitarian issues. You have over 2.2 million people who are displaced and living in IDP camps. Um, if you go down to the North Central, you have people who are displaced as a result of farmer header clashes. If you go up north, um, northwest towards Katsina and um, Sokoto axis, you see lots of people who are displaced from their ancestral homes as a result of um, banditry and killings by bandits. So um, right now, there's a lot of issues in the country. We are faced with a lot of humanitarian emergencies. And um, many of these people are surviving based on interventions of government, of course, but also of humanitarian actors like Action Aid Nigeria. Um, with the emergence of COVID-19 in Nigeria, uh, humanitarians have had to rethink the, how we work because we are aware of the transmission um, modality, which is through physical contact. So we have to um, rethink how we work uh, so at the moment, they are in many parts of the country. There have been restrictions or ban placed on large congregation of people. So, for instance, our activities that have to do with large crowds, we are having to rethink through those strategies. But of course, these are not easy times for the country and they are not easy times for uh, humanitarian workers. As you are aware, humanitarian workers face a lot of challenges. In the Northeast, there have been targets of uh, of the insurgents, they have been kidnapped, they have been killed. And um, with the COVID-19, it's also imperative that uh, humanitarian workers do take time and look at ways of protecting themselves to be safe, to be alive, to be able to continue to do the work. So um, it has, to a large extent, impeded the way we work. We have to change. There are certain activities that we cannot do. But uh, all the same, we need to try and be there because there are many organizations, there are many people who are depending on the work of humanitarians like myself and Action Aid to be able to survive. People who are getting food rations on a monthly basis. We have to find a way. So we have prepositioned um, some hygiene kits that we are distributing to the beneficiaries by giving them um, hygiene kits that include soap, sanitizers, and a range of other items to help them improve their sanitation at this period. But of course, we have also intensified, alongside our normal activities that we're implementing, we have intensified a door-to-door -door campaign, passing information on the virus and how people can stay safe. And in the event that people are infected, what they can do. It's not, these are not easy times for any humanitarian. First of all, we are scared for our lives, but we're also faced with the challenges that, um, of, of meeting the needs of people. As humanitarians, we have signed up for this, and these are the things that we, we are doing. To a large extent, this has impeded our work, but we are, we are, we are going forward. Um, I have been in discussions with um, quite a number of um, colleagues, um, and one of the things is how do we go ahead and do our activities and conduct our interventions in the face of this, in this epidemic? And there are guidelines that have been shared by various sectors that guide operations in the face of this epidemic. We're pushing and we're trying to, to keep saving lives as we have always done. Thank you.